welcome back to HHTV Sport, bringing you live sporting events direct from the past. Today, we've got exclusive coverage of the Olympics from ancient Greece. So let's go over to our commentary team in the year 400 BC. Good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's coverage. We're all set here for the finals of the sprint, which shall be taking place in a couple of minutes. The athletes are naked. They're naked. The athletes are actually naked. <laughs> They're not ready. They're not ready. No, we are ready. We run naked. Over to you, Tanny. So we run, man. It's an ancient Greek thing. Okay. Over to you, Tanny, with the women's events, please. Hi. I'll be covering all the women's events at these Olympics. Oh, um, I'm just hearing there are no women's events. Women aren't allowed to take part at these Olympic Games. Apparently, they're not even allowed to watch. I guess it's an ancient Greek thing. Back to the studio. Right, well, while we wait for something we can actually cover, let's just catch up with the Olympic medal table so far. Greece doing pretty well there, as you'd expect. No one else is competing. So, Greece, top of the table there, and indeed, bottom. Speaking of bottoms, let's go back to John. Hello again. I'm pleased to say I'm standing with the fully clothed Euphemius. Uh, shouldn't you be getting ready? You're on in a minute. I am ready. This is how we race. I thought you guys ran in the nude. No, 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 no. This race is the Hoplomachy. We run the whole thing in full armour, like, show off our military prowess. But it's just a running race. Why do you need a shield? It's an ancient Greek thing. No, when you're this close to the javelin area, it kind of comes in handy. Over to you, Richard. Thank you, John. I'm here for an update on the Pancration. So what is that, I hear you ask? It's two men fighting, only with no gloves and even fewer rules. Here to tell me all about it is the winner, Krugas. I'm Dak Zemanos, the loser. Um, that's Krugas, he's the winner. Ah, isn't he, um, well, dead? Yes, he's dead. See, the thing is, in Pankration, you're not supposed to kill your opponents. I did, and uh, so I got disqualified. So, technically, Krugas is the winner. <laughs> don't tell me, it's an ancient Greek thing. So, why don't you talk us through it? Well, the thing is, I've got pretty sharp nails on my hand, and when I hit him in the stomach, I sort of pull his guts out. Coming up next, my lunch. Back to the studio. Yeah. It's week one of our ancient Greek topic and as I'm sure you've already guessed we are going to be looking at the legacy of the Olympics this week. So the Olympic Games began in Olympia in 776 BC and I'm hoping you can see on the screen my mouse which is circling Olympia on the map of ancient Greece. And 776 BC was 2,796 years ago. So that's nearly 3,000 years since the first Olympic Games. Now, the Olympics were part of four sporting events called the Pan-Hellenic Games. But out of the four, the Olympics were seen as the most important. And just like our Olympics, well, our Summer Olympics, it took place every four years in August. Now, as well as being a big sporting event, it was also seen as a religious festival and the games were held in honour of Zeus, who was the king of the gods. Now, in Olympia, there was a temple that was built and it was dedicated to Zeus and the athletes and the visitors would all go to the temple to, um, to worship him and to offer sacrifices and to show their worth as participants in the games. Now, the two pictures on the screen, the first one is a picture of an artist's impression of what the temple would have looked like. And then the second one is a modern photo. So that's what the temple looks like now. Unfortunately, it's in ruins, but it's nice to see that a little bit of it has survived for us to be able to look at. So who could take part? Well, we've already just seen that girls were not allowed. So women were unable to take part in the games. So men only, and they had to be able to speak Greek and they were not allowed to be slaves. And these men would travel from all over Greece, from all of the different city states to compete um, against each other. Now, during the games, the city states would call a truce with each other, which means that they would stop their wars and they would stop their fighting and they would allow the men to travel safely down to Olympia to take part. Now, not only were women not allowed to take part in the games, but they were also not allowed to go and watch the games either, 
which is a little bit rubbish if you were a mum and your son was competing. And the reason for this is because they were naked. So there you go. That's why they weren't allowed to go. So let's have a look at some of the sporting events that took place in the Olympics in Greece. So we had running and wrestling, chariot racing. We definitely don't have that one now, do we? Boxing and the pentathlon. And if you think Pentagon has five sides, a pentathlon has five events as part of it. So you had the long jump and the discus throw, the javelin throw, a stadium race and wrestling. Now, in the very first Olympic Games, there was only one race. That's right, one race, a running race, and that went around the length of the stadium and was called a stadium race. So the same one that's in the pentathlon. That was approximately 200 metres. Okay. Now, by the 14th Olympic Games, they then introduced a second running race. Um, which was at one lap around the stadium and that was approximately 400 meters after that then gradually the other sporting events started to be introduced fun fact for you all we love a fun fact May the main event at the olympic games wasn't actually a sporting event oh no it was a sacrifice of a hundred oxen to zeus and this sacrifice took place in the temple normally on the third day, so the middle of the Olympics, because it was normally about five days long. And um, yeah, just like the, I suppose, the Tudors that we looked at before who loved uh, an execution, the Greeks loved a sacrifice. So let's have a look at the winning. Now we know that if we have a sporting event now, we normally have a first, a second and a third place. And if we think about the modern day Olympics, they have the podiums, don't they, where they have all the winners placed together. Not in the ancient Greek Olympics. In the ancient Greek Olympics, there was only one winner and there were no medals. Instead, the winner would get a wreath made of olive leaves, which came from a sacred tree behind the temple that was dedicated to Zeus in Olympia. They'd also have a statue built in their honour. Now, for the city-state that the, the winner came from, this was obviously a big deal because this meant that they'd have a bit more power or they'd look like they had more power against the other city-states. So that's just a little bit of an overview. Obviously, you can go and research more about the Olympics and um, what they got up to which is actually one of your tasks for this week so first of all we want you to research if you have a look on the home learning overview that is on the school website mrs underwood has very kindly found some really good videos that will help you out and will give you a lot more information about the ancient greek olympics there are also lots of fantastic resources online that you can google and have a look at or you might have some books at home that you can read through as well. Once you've done that, your main task for this week is to compare the ancient Greek Olympics with the modern day ones. Now, if you are following our English videos this week, we are going to be looking at the modern day Olympics. So they will be able to help you with this task. Now we've put some questions there as a, as a starter. You can, do this in any way you like. It's completely up to you how you do this. I've put a couple of examples for you. So this one here, I've just done a spider diagram, a bit of a mind map. And I don't know if you can see at the bottom, I've done a key. So I've got ancient Greeks in green and then the modern day Olympics in red. So you could do something like that. You might want to just do a table. So something really simple like that, where you just have ancient Greece on one side, modern day on the other, and you compare the two. You might just want to answer the questions that are on the side. That is absolutely fine. However you want to do it is up to you. So that's your main task for the week. And then another task that you might like to do is an art one. So can you design your own logo for the Olympics? or your own brand of sportswear. I did have a thought, you might want to maybe design some clothes for the ancient Greeks, seeing as they didn't wear any. Um, and you need to think when you do this, what colors would you use? What words and symbols would you use? And why? why? Why have you chosen those colors and words and those symbols and what do they represent? Now, 
we would love to see all the work that you have completed this week. So please, please, please email, email your class email addresses, send your work in that way. You can tweet them on Twitter as well. And then next week, well, either at the end of this week or the beginning of next week, we will put together a big celebration video of the work that you've done this week. Now remember, although we're looking at the Olympics this week, our overall project is to think about what was the ancient Greeks' greatest legacy. So we now know that one legacy was the Olympics. Now I want you to think about, as you're researching the Olympics, is that their greatest one? Now, obviously, until we've looked at the others, you might not be able to answer that. But just have that question in the back of your mind as you're going through it as well. So there you go. An introduction to this week's um, task. I hope you enjoy researching the Olympics. I hope you find out lots of information and we all look forward to seeing the work that you get up to.